Hey everyone, Gerard Scarpacey here, Craft Hairdresser, co-founder of the Hairwind community. So excited to be working again with Peter Gray, editorial phenom, hey guys. Uh, on behalf of our friends at Intelligent Beauty Global. Uh, we did one just a few weeks ago, it was so well received, we decided to do another one. We're on the West Coast this time in LA. Peter's got his beautiful model, Anna, who we're going to learn a little bit about. She's a little phenom of herself in the roller skating world, uh, I think is it on TikTok? Yep, so she's kind of a big deal out there. Peter, uh, as you know, as I mentioned earlier, editorial, one of the top in the world, working on fashion shows, um, edit editorials, advertising, uh, you name it, covers of fantastic magazines, so he's the real deal. He's gonna be showing us a little bit of a creative twist on a French, French roll using a braid. He's got some fun stuff happening, but he's gonna trim her hair up first. So we've got a lot going on here, guys. I'll be monitoring, looking for your questions. I'll be popping in and out to talk to Peter and to talk about Intelligent Beauty Global and their incredible organic line of products. So Peter. All right, guys. Where are we starting? Where are we starting? With the products on the floor to start with. Oops. There we go. All right, so I'm just gonna use a little bit of the Good Hair Guardian, which is like a prep spray. Um, I use it as I use it as cutting lotion and it just allows the comb to slip through the hair without any sort of tangles, it means I don't have to brush naturally curly hair through before I kind of wet it down. Um, I very rarely get the opportunity to shampoo my clients or guests, so I'm working with natural texture. Um, if I'm on set, the last thing I want to do is give this hair a really good brushing and then destroy the curl texture. The more I can use the white teeth as a cutting, the better it is for me. I wanted to mention for everyone at home, if you've got technical questions about editorial hair drying, uh, hair styling, cutting, the products, we're here to answer those. And then we've also got on the feed here our good buddy Gordon Nelson, uh, one of my dear friends who's uh, the sales director for Intelligent Beauty. If you're interested in bringing in this incredible new line that is truly organic, truly pure, uh, comes from the legacy of Horst Reckelbacher and his family. Um, drop some questions there and Gordon can help answer those for you. Gordon Nelson, give him a shout out. And he'll be dropping tags and things in here and links to help you guys. All right, so what's the first product that you used and why? So I used a bit of the prep spray and that's just to detangle and also to give me a little bit of combability to the hair. Um, it just helps when you're putting a comb through the hair instead of you know, having to weigh it down with conditioner. I'm using a little bit of the fortified leave-in conditioner, mid and ends. Um, put in a tiny bit more around the hairline. This has got a little bang here, which I cut in a couple of months ago when we actually did the videos that you've all been watching on Instagram. So am I right, this is what you've used, Good Hair Guardian? That's it, the Good Hair Guardian. So Good Hair Thermal Guardian Primer. from Intelligent Beauty Global. I think what's interesting is like, you know, we kind of using the products prior to cutting um, just to facilitate mm -hmm. combing through no tangles or as little tangling as possible on textured hair using the wide tooth comb. There we go. How's that going, Anna? It feels so nice. So the exciting thing about these series of videos and um, all the Instagram content and social media content that we've been working on for um, intelligent beauty global um, is that I've been able to find people that inspired me and what inspired me was people who are genetic um, with a different take um, the first woman was Caroline Labochir from Abu Dhabi and she's a 57 year old ultra marathon runner Pete I have a question here it's Kelly from behind the camera um, what kind of haircut are you doing on Anna today what kind of haircut we're still deciding Kelly Got any pointers? A haircut that you can do in 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually going to do, do it. It's a take on round graduation. Um, what it will do if I turn Anna sideways, you'll have a look. Can you see how long the layers are through this area? If I pull them up, they're almost square here. Um, but there are all sorts of different lengths, a little bit short underneath. So what I'm going to do is take this length on top, elevate it up, and take it off, take the corner off. But instead of layering through like that around the top, I'm gonna to come through from the front where I have this little short bang at the front. Which I butchered. And just had a go at it herself, which is always good. 
Well, the funny thing about that, and I, I will be brief, is that Peter said to me, <laughs> it should be fun. very easy. You can just, you know, clean this up yourself. You can maintain this little bang trim yourself. But he's an actual artist, and I'm telling you, like, I... Easy, well, easier said than done. Well, how, how, is Peter, how is Peter on skates? No, <laughs> they are uh, this uh, fantastic skater. I know, I think that is, how people, skates? that is how people feel when I'm like, oh, it should be super simple. You just sort of bend your knees and keep yeah. your chin up. And they're like, um, yeah, and just be naturally right. good at skating, I guess. <laughs> No, I think so we had Dean Holcomb, the DP on skates, didn't we? Well, well Dean is a great skater. He's, he's a great skater. And he was chasing after her on Venice Boardwalk, all the way down to Santa Monica. So, guys, what we're talking about is this incredible, uh, Peter's been creating content to kind of help um, with the brand, it's, it's recognition. The product has been around for a while. It's gone through some great incarnations. It's just been relaunched again um, as Intelligent Beauty Global uh, with new... Uh, formulations, the best they've ever had, um, and Peter's been working to help yeah. kind of create this um, look on social media. So they've done some videos, and you can find them on Peter's page, you can find them on Intelligent Beauty Global, um, and it's all about skating on the beach uh, with great hair, right? Roller skating, and Anna's a top roller skater. I mean, the exciting thing, was when I found Anna and Bailey, both of them together, it was really interesting, because, you know, they were both like really interesting people with really interesting backgrounds. I mean, Anna's an actress, but has actually, during lockdown, kind of managed to make a living, right? Mm -hmm. From roller skating, mm -hmm. doing like roller skating blogs and you know, yeah. pushing your TikTok profile through the ceiling. Yeah, the, um, Bailey helped me get into TikTok. He, I was keeping a sort of skate diary, just a bunch of videos that I wasn't really publishing online, and Bailey suggested that I put them on TikTok. And he helped me make my first video. And Bailey and I have taken, you know, we're friends, we've, take, we've skated together, taken acting classes together, been scene partners. Um, you know, he was supposed to be here today. We miss you, Bailey, if you ever watch this. Oh, we miss you, Bailey. Um, but yeah, he's, he's lovely. And I think that skating has, has um, just fortified friendships and sort of given, I don't know, like allowed me to connect with you, with people outside of my community, not just in the skate community or not just in the acting community. It's an amazing sense of camaraderie, isn't there? Within, yeah. Not just within the community, because even when we were skating. We artists, had... writers, hair, like you said, hairdressers, all sorts of people, like retired folks who work at Home Depot, who used to competitively skate, who still skate for pleasure. It's, I mean, it's like multi-generational. It's grandparents skating with their grandchildren. It's, it's like, true. We have one know? friend that's in HR and one hairdresser that both skate. I was telling you, they like, so I, 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 I really love to hear that you're inspired by that. I was inspired by it too. I'm sort of new to the community. I've only been skating for four years and I was just an outsider also looking in being like, wow, this is so inspiring. These people seem so genuinely happy. And there's, um, you know, when we're talking about brands, I watch the videos and I see, I'm like, oh, this looks like a music video. It looks like an advertisement. I want to know what they're wearing, who did their hair, how it's moving. It's like... I think that's what inspired me was my early days of working on, you know, for about 10 or 15 years, I worked on music videos. And it was always such good fun. You know, crazy hours, but always fun. And I really wanted to bring that element of fun into what we were doing. And movement, like yeah. usually hair videos are like stagnant or in the studio. I had never gotten a haircut on and, the and, beach and, before. And so much sort of artificiality, uh -huh. like in the person, personas that we kind of portray in hair ads. You know, and what, what was exciting here is that it's like really authentic, people genuinely into what they're doing. All right, Peter, so you've got people tuning in from all over the world. If you're just joining us, we're here with Peter Gray in a studio here in LA. Uh, with his beautiful model, Anna, who's featured in some videos that he did for Intelligent Beauty Global. Um, he's trimming her hair up first, and what, well, uh, can you break the haircut down for us a little bit, Peter? So, what I'm doing is working the hair all forward and elevating as I go. So what I've done is just disconnecting from the fringe a little now, as I've got back to sort of halfway back on the head, this next section, I'm doing a slight disconnection and just doing a sliding blend, elevating as I go. So this basically keeps all the length but gets lots of free form layers on the inside? Absolutely. Are you pulling everything to one guideline or are you I'm not, I'm actually go? elevating each progressive section, I'm elevating slightly more. 
So um, it's almost like how you would check off an old round graduation haircut. You would elevate, elevate, elevate. So what so I'm doing here is super so versatile, something that can be dressed in a lot of different ways. There's something you do a lot on set if you have to trim all the models there. Absolutely. I mean, the layers around the face kind of really work for most people. And, you know, certainly in the business, it definitely helps. Yeah. You know, it takes a bit of weight off around the face. Spots of hanging, and you know the little bang afterwards. I can tailor the little bang and shape that afterwards, you know, with the points of the scissors, just to get a little bit of interesting texture. So, Peter, you've got people tuning in from all over. I saw Switzerland, uh, South Africa, which is your wow. your born and raised Hi, Africa. Uh, uh, Gregor from Germany. A little uh, maybe okay. unknown uh, thing about Peter is that he's actually African. He was born and raised there. Uh, in uh, Zimbabwe. That's great. But you know, now your family is all in South Africa, yeah? Yep, that's right. So shout out to our friend from South Africa who is, uh, loves watching Tips and Tricks. So I think and the biggest thing here is the speed of the haircut. And I think in the salon situation, it's the same as being on set. You're looking for speed. You know, you're not looking to drag it out. Um, instead of making things complicated and switching around, you can work from the back and work forward. I find it quite complicated unless I have a mirror in front of me to get the same angle. So what I do is I work forward here, grab my section, and I just elevate from the inside up. Oh, it's nice to see that because I think sometimes people get a little confused and they're on the front of I mean, one side. Working, working from behind, it's yeah. great. It's, it's a different it's, perspective. It's, though, it's a completely perspective and trying to judge that angle and get those two angles at the same level right. unless you have a mirror it's really tricky. So uh, you know again you know, kind of not demystifying hair cutting rather than making it more complicated is kind of my mission after 15 years of teaching at the students. Our friend Vilma uh, from Kansas City is saying hello. We'll be seeing you soon Vilma. Great All to right. great to have it. I'm down for the so show we're here on behalf of Intelligent Beauty which is uh, a, a line that was founded by Horst Reckelbacher. Uh, really incredible products. We're going to turn around here. And now it's been carried on by his family, his, um, his partner and his daughter. Um, and you know, just recently, they kind of reinvigorated the packaging, the ingredients to make them really the most pure uh, they can be. One of the things that kind of blows my mind is that you know, any product line can say it's pure and organic. What they do at Intelligent Beauty that's a little bit different is they have third party Certification. Uh, certifications. I mean, this, so, this is what really sold yeah. me on yeah, that. That's what I was going to ask you, Peter. What t you tell us about your perspective. You don't uh, necessarily work for Intelligent Beauty. You're not part of the company, but you've chosen to work with their products and represent them. And I know that you can work with anyone you want. So why? I mean, I think you know. One, I, you know, I love a bit of granola. Um, I'm vegan. You know, I realize that we all have to realize sooner or later that there is only one one planet. Um, that there's more to this business that we're in that, than competition. So, you know, it's been, I've been quoted as saying it before, but you know, unless more people, and less, aka everyone, starts to make a move towards environmentalism, we are doomed. I and, mean, you know, it's, there's, it's just an absolute fact. So, you know, we either wait until it's too late and then take action, you know, try and kind of patch the holes, um, or we do something now. And the great thing about post well, of course, the original mission was that it was so pure. I mean, he had done a Vader, he had sold a Vader, he could have just, you know, sat back in the deck chair and done nothing. But instead, you know, he got on his back in the lab and actually evolved like a very, very interesting line of products. Um, they're certified USDA, USDA, for example, which is really not an easy certification. That's like a food grade certification. Food grade. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah, our good friend Port Nelson is also pointing out something that it's a it's a female-led brand. Uh, Kara and Nicole, the, those who run the company now, oh, the big decisions. Yeah, well. which is pretty rare. You know, at the very top of a company, the CEOs, the presidents. Unfortunately, an industry that's all about women and mm -hmm. all about eighty percent female mm -hmm. hairdressers. That being two dudes on the set, but we do have mm -hmm. Kelly behind the camera, mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, it, it is it is a great thing. Um, you had a question coming in from Kellen Jordan. Why go back and forth instead of just doing one side and then the other? Balance. Balance. It's, a, it's um, just inherently, I don't like, you know, even when I do a bob, I would tend to start at the front and work backwards rather than starting at the back. 
just because I like to have the balance. And then once I've established that guide at the front, you tend to find that the customer actually calms down. They know the length that you're kind of going for. They see it immediately. Um, if I was working with a mirror, Anna would be able to see the length straight away, which I really like. You know, the, working on balance like this, I can actually stand here and I've got a feeling for where my balance is and we're pretty much spot on there. So, I mean, obviously that comes with time and practice. I'm not saying that it's going to be bingo every time, but the fact that you're able to do one and then the other will give you an inherent sense of balance. So Peter, most people that know you know you as an editorial hairdresser and uh, doing all this wild hair and avant-garde hair and also very classic and celebrity hair. But you started your career as a haircutter at Sassoon's. How do you go from that kind of, you know, very regimented way of looking at hair and it's really all focused on cutting to being this editorial uh, kind of monster that you are? How did that happen? I think it was actually Bailey, who, uh, the photographer, David Bailey, who said that Vidal Sassoon left his scar in the 60s. Um, and it was really that, that I just got to a point where I wanted to make women look pretty. I wanted to make women look like women that I like to look at. Um, and that wasn't necessarily about geometric haircuts. So, you know, for me, it was exci it's exciting to work with different people. I and mean, it's exciting to do something really soft, beautiful, commercially accessible that can be you know, utilized in a salon environment. And then it's really interesting because next week I go into Fashion Week where we may or may not be doing something absolutely bonkers. Peter, I have a quick question. Um, are you elevating these sections right now? Yes. Yes, you're continuing uh, to, uh, every section elevates. To elevate around and around and around and I'm still pulling the hair slightly forward. Okay. And even as you're cutting it, you're elevating it a little bit. So just kind of make the line a bit softer. Just to blurry soften the line. Blurs so it out. What happens then around your perimeter, if I shake the perimeter loose here, you can see all the layers from here all the way down and the layers stay on the top surface then. And because you're dragging this forward and up, you're retaining the length from the hairline, but removing weight from the top of the head. Whereas when, if you do a 45 degree up here, you're just taking the weight out of the back and then you've got this careful shift around to the, uh, to the sides where you may or may not take cognizance of the fact that the hairline around the ear is weak, that the hairlines at the temples are weak. This way you obviate all that and there's no problem with it, uh, there's no risk of kind of overdoing anything. As I get down to the bottom here, I'm just going to clean up and I'm actually going to use the points there rather than sliding just to round right through on that point at the top of the head. And right now I'm down the center of the back of the head, so I should be elevating right up. So I'm just chipping, chipping, chipping all the way through. And it's just taking that corner off right at the top of the head. Because by the time I push all this hair from the front back, I'm gonna have plenty of layering in here for the hair. Anna, lots of life. She's got naturally curly hair, likes it to be kind of full and bouncy and quite wild looking, very beachy. And do you cross back to the center or do you just end up right in the center? Yeah, I'm gonna, actually, it's just, if you have a look from where I'm pulling here, I'm just pulling slightly outside of center. So I'm using fine tooth to put in a bit of tension here. So I'm just pulling a little bit of tension and it's just pulling out a tiny bit. And as I move through there, just rounding through to meet so that all I'll have in my cross check, I should actually have a point to remove. Now, normally, you would say, try to elevate continuously and continue your sections around. If you're doing classic round graduation, you would continue sections around and around and around. So Peter, I know you're getting close to the finish of the haircut. And yep. What's kind of exciting here is um, Peter's going to be doing some styling. So he showed you some of his haircutting. Very simple, straightforward technique that I think we can all benefit from. And then you're going to go into some styling. Um, question about product and styling. So being editorial, doing fashion shows, uh, it really is all about choosing the right product to build that look. And there's this kind of old like kind of belief that organic and natural products don't perform well, as well as synthetic products. Now working with Intelligent Beauty Global, obviously we know that these products are the, the, the highest standards of, of naturals can be. So how is the performance better for you? I mean, I think it's a bit like, you know, the, Best analogy I can come up with is, you know, the electric car system. You know, the, you know, Tesla is a, a clear competitor now in the vehicle market. 
And I think we've got to a point now where, you know, if um, natural products are no longer subpar performance, we're able to get something very, very good in terms of performance, um, better if not. Uh, I mean, I definitely think they're better because I like the fact that I'm not using anything that's harmful on the head or harmful to the planet. Um, you know, working with recycled packaging that's 90% recycled, which everyone goes, why is it not 100% re recycled? Because actually 100% recycled, you can't recycle again once it's been used. Um, so at 90% you can recycle the plastic, so that's your point. So I mean, that, that's great to hear because I think that is that kind of old wives tale from perhaps the 90s when, or even the 80s when things started to go more organic. It was like you had to sacrifice mm -hmm. performance. Mm -hmm. The Prius. Yeah. <laughs> and, and now that's no longer true. You know, we've got the highest performing products possible here. They meet the standards of editorial, the hairdresser. Uh, so the love from Hannah Ruth Evans from Van Michael. Said she's uh, always seen you styling you. hair. She loves to see you cut hair. Uh, Gordon Nelson holding it down here, dropping a lot of knowledge about Intelligent uh, Beauty Global and the oh, foundation of it. And also I want to shout out to Hilary Bilstadt, our good friend, who is one of the global innovators, who's an educator now for Intelligent Nutrients. I'm sure she's looking forward to an opportunity to work with you, Peter. Oh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun coming up. And I think we're kind of just branching into Fashion Week now. Um, you know, it's going to be like a slow takeover. And I think it's getting people all on board, getting people to understand, you know, like the Tesla, if the people were cynical in the beginning, I think people were not expecting performance, were they? Um, and as, yeah, I can as remember, the, like, hearing that, you know, zero to 60, that the Tesla and now, and now the Porsche, the electronic Porsche, they're actually the fastest zero to 60 out there. It's like, well, wow, performance can happen. Which is uh, crazy, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to use now is a bit of the bell curve cream. So this is a curl cream? Yeah. I'll say a really nice thick curl cream. Um, How would you describe that consistency? It's like a really nice thick creamy viscosity. You've been using it, haven't you? Dan, are you, are you oh, using some of these products yeah. at home yourself? Yes. Yeah. So one thing I did do before any of them are before I worked with any of the models, um, we kind of made sure packages are dropped off with all of them, skin and hair so that they get to kind of come back and give us feedback um, on you know, which are their favorite products, which ones they like, which ones they're finding they're using more and more. All right, Anna, so tell us about it. If you're just joining, we've got Anna, Anna's uh, TikTok phenom for roller skating. You actually have a few fans on here that said you're their favorite roller skater. Oh, yeah. it is, skater uh, fan. So with, with the, the products that were sent to you, what, what have you been using? Um, I really love all the curl stuff. I have like kind of wavy, loose curls. Um, my hair is not too thick, and so it sort of um, doesn't take like heavy product well. It really weighs it down, makes it look oily, and I don't find that to be true with this product or with anything from Intelligent Beauty for that matter. Um, and I and I switched to their shampoo and conditioner because, um, you know, it's surprising how many harsh chemicals are in your cleanser or conditioner mm -hmm. that's meant to condition. Um, I also got a tip from Peter, which to make my products more effective, he suggested drying my hair, which I had never been doing with an actual blower, the blow dryer, or diffusing the it. Diffuser, yeah. Um, you know, Hanging your head upside down. Yeah, and I think that taking the moist, taking the water, especially the hard water, out of my hair um, has like decreased frizz, um, it's felt less dry. Is this, is this true? Do you guys find this to be true? Absolutely. Yeah. Which, uh, do you know which yeah, of the I was 30 when I got a blow dryer. <laughs> well, that's good in some ways, yeah. Which condition and shampoo are you using? Do you remember the names? Um, Peter, do you remember which ones you sent me? I believe you're using Fortify. Fortify. Nice. So again, this is the Bell Curve Curl Cream and Peter, um, how would you recommend yeah, people, people use that? So again, Kelly has just, uh, just been using it and yeah. I think Kelly's been applying. So when you apply, I can actually apply it in layers and 
through the ends here, I'm just going to put in a little bit through into the ends and just really work it into the ends of the hair. Um, try to keep it away from the roots. If you're looking at more volume at the roots, then we have the bell curve spray, which is a curl reviving spray, which is great for like second days. You can literally just take that down to the root. Which I, I use to because since my curls aren't super strong, I feel like they can lose their luster, especially in like the arid climate. That like is second day. Yeah, that is California. So I like to wet it, wet them again. They really, you know, benefit from the extra moisture and hydration. And like, and are you using water to wet it down again, or yeah. are you just using the bell curve? Sometimes I add water to like, especially I mean like filtered water. I do in a oh, spray bottle. There we go. Filtered water. Now that's something really interesting that's kind of evolving now, isn't so it? So Peter, you're using the Bell Curve uh, Reviving Spray specifically at the roots. Do you feel that like that gives a little bit of boost? It I just mean... gives me a little bit more volume without the weight. The cream will give you weight at the roots. So, you know, it, it, it's, again, the logic is if you take it to skincare, if you use something liquid, it's going to be lighter. If you use something uh, creamy, it's going to be heavier. So, you know, this is something that I really try to get across to people. Just you know, the great thing about Intelligent Nutrients is they do have a skincare brand and it's all analogous. Yeah, and um, the smell, they smell so good. So good. Especially the face, well, I don't the face and my hair stuff. I mean, yeah, there's a beautiful kind of citrus aroma mm -hmm. to, that runs through, I think, almost and all of the product. not overpowering. Yeah. That's actually lovely. I, I like to spray it on myself every day. You've been using it, haven't you? Yeah, I mean, I've been using, I, I'm fortunate, all the products, all the companies we work with send me their products. Um, I am, at, when they were first relaunching, sent me everything and I found some things that I really love. I use the tussle texture cream for even my hair gets a little longer. Oh, like but more than anything, it's all about skincare for me. Mm -hmm. I've been using um, the Regener, I think it's Regenerating. Yeah, Regenerative Superpower C Serum. I've been using the green oil. And these uh, are, that's, you know, my, that's my favorite. Green oil. A beautiful package. I mean, too. green oil. I don't think there's not a there's not a single bottle of green oil that I don't have that I haven't broken into, because I literally work out. Green oil's my go-to product. Um, I use it constantly. I use it night to myself. I use it on clients. I use it on hair. I love green oil on textured hair. It gives you like a really beautiful separation. Mm. Um, Here's some great knowledge coming in from Gordon Nelson. We were just talking about the aroma of the product and he said the aroma is also 99% certified organic aroma. Oh. So it's not any type of fragrance or synthetic fragrance. Well, I feel like I can yeah. tell. That's what I mean I by, like uh, by a light right smell that's not overpowering. I feel like when, when fragrance is added into product, that's when it gets just... Yeah, it smells like strawberries. Yeah, but no, how does that have a more sensitive uh, sniffer. That's very true. Mm -hmm. That's why I believe that to be true, yeah. And the liquid green oil is USDA certified. And again, Gordon Nelson holding it down here with a great uh, uh, commentary on behalf. He's giving us the facts. Yeah, he said there's going to be a green oil uh, body. Body Ooh, oil. Oh, it is a green Body oil. Oh my, I'm excited because literally get in the shower and just head to town. I've just been like this amazing exhibition in Venice with um, a, a really amazing photographer, Matthew Brooks. Um, and almost all our heads of hair, I basically um, used the green oil on the hair and the skin. Okay. And it worked amazingly on Afro-American hair, like really incredibly. Peter, we've got a shout out from our old friend Cristiano Cora. Oh, so you're an amazing session stylist. And Ciao! Oh, big love from it. Are you still in Italy? Okay, so you've got all the product distributed and now you're braiding. So what, yeah. what's happening here? So I put, it, put all the product through and I'm just putting like a little cornrow down the back here. Just taking tiny little cornrow sections here. And I'm just putting all the way down the middle at the back here. All right, any tips for those of us that maybe struggle with braiding? I've tried so many times and I'm a mediocre braider at best. Uh, I remember Sharon Blaine telling me that my hands were, were maybe just too big, maybe just too sweaty to be good at braiding. Uh, I disagree. Uh, well, you, you tell me your take on it. Same as roller skating, practice. Same as hair cutting, practice. I mean, you know, it's, how many, it's not how many times you stand up, it's how many times you fall down that makes you a better skater, right? Right. It's like, you know, it's, I think, I think it's just taking those sections, like you saw, I started with a comb. Once I get going and I get a nice flow to the sections, I can take those sections and just pull them in 
and I'm pulling them in. They don't have to be perfect because it's not a visible uh, braid. It's going to be underneath the back of the head. So this will be like a base for you when you roll the hair and exactly. something to attach it to? Exactly, because Anna roller skates. And this is something I would do like for brides, um, you know, for any sort of athletes or music videos. If you're looking for hair to stay in place, you can do this if, even for a ponytail. I did a little ponytail stay on the last live. And this is like an advancement on that. The whole idea with these lives is that we're creating a library. So. So again, even in the salon, if you're just doing like French rolls or French twists or something, you can figure out how to put all these braids in and then you've got something to pin the hair into. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. And it's like the biggest problem is, you know, people walk out and, you know, if they've got 55 pins in their head. You know, with something like this, you want three or four pins maximum. It just mm. locks right into it's the just, braid. Absolutely. Just, I just got off of a film and it was, I was just talking to my friend Karina about this yesterday. She was trying to, like, you know, you get off the set, you're exhausted, you've been working for 16 hours, and the last thing you want to do after you've just, like, zombied, like, made it into the bath, just taken a quick little bath, but you have 50 pins in your hair. Like, what do you do? <laughs> you know? It was, it was go through the metal detector. You, just, you, go, you go to bed, and then at 3 in the morning, you're, pull, you're still pulling out <laughs> pins out of your hair. Yeah, I really um, don't like using a lot of pins. Yeah, isn't that, that's kind of like one of the tricks there, especially if you're on set and you're changing hair a lot. Yeah, you want it to be it hidden. With 50 pins, it's going to be hard to do a quick... The photographer says, quick change. let's try it, yeah. see what it looks like down. Yeah. You're like, okay, I'll see it in an hour. Yeah, which, you know, or you need to take her back to the mirror, which photographers definitely short-circuit about. Okay, so just about an inch above the hairline there, inch and a half, I just stop in there. Okay, and you continue braiding for a moment, just to give you like a little bit of leeway there. Okay, now here's another little trick. These little elastic bands, when you use them, when you use one, it snaps. So what I'm doing is using two together. I've used, there are actually two little bands there. Wait, so how did you put them together? So I've just literally just... Roped one through the other? Roped one through the other. Oof. They, they really integrate so well that you've got an, it's a real fiddle to get them apart. Can you see that yet, Kelly, mm -hmm. that there's two? Yeah, yeah we can see good. that. Yeah. You can see. Mm -hmm. There we go. We've got two little bands. So instead of fiddling with one band that breaks, I use two, and you get that much more stretch, double the strength. Now I can put that around the base of that um, braid, and I can just literally wind that into the head very, very simply. May I touch it? Yep. Yeah. Here you go. Give us one second, and once I've taken my finger off, it's all yours. And you'll feel. Okay, and then I just, below that, I just comb out the braid. Okay, Anna, do you want to feel that? Yes. Put your finger on the knot there at the bottom. Can you feel this? Like a little track braid. Right. It's like and a little spine. And yeah. If, yeah, and if you do do it loose, it like uh, just blends right in. The rest Absolutely. Of Absolutely. So you can see like it's got like, you know, a bit of tend, enough looseness to be able to get pins underneath it. Don't braid it so tight and don't do a reverse. You know, if you do a reverse, obviously it sticks out from the head. I don't like that. Now, the great thing now is I can take the clips out, I can shake the hair loose. start seeing the texture. You can actually see the texture now drying in of its own accord. And for me, this is the big key. Like, I really don't like to use a lot of heat on hair. Um, I think most of my clients kind of have so much punishment. Anna was just telling me you were in a wig for the last couple of weeks, right, on mm -hmm. set. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the last thing, you know, anybody wants is to feel like there's a lot of goo in their hair or that their hair is very stiff. You can see all the layering around the face now, bringing in a lot of curl there. Just kind of leave the fringe very, very natural. Didn't take a classic triangle section, just kind of pulled it out very loosely and very naturally. I didn't want any sort of delineation between short and long. Again, a little more love coming in for you, uh, Amy. I like that your model is chatting. Is she a hairdresser too? Not a hairdresser, but an actress and a 
roller skating phenom on TikTok. If people want to check out your TikTok, uh, Anna Octo. Anna Octo. A N A O C T O. And roller Which skating Octo videos. Octo is an anagram for my name because my last name is Poto, but of course, you know, eight wheels. So. Mm -hmm. Cool. I, had to, I didn't I had to know take that. that. Yeah. That's interesting. I mean, I think this is really the inspiration, you know, with Intelligent Beauty Global, the inspiration for me, when I first talked to the ladies, it was just, you know, basically trying to get something really unusual, really interesting. Getting away from the traditional hair model. Right, so, medium heat, low blow, and I'm literally going to do this for two minutes. So I'm not going to bore you with a lot of diffusing. Just gonna put it into Anna's hair through the back. So you're just trying to kind of activate that wave and get the get the moisture out so you can do some some uh, dressing? Absolutely. And I want to keep the texture in the hair as opposed to blow drying it out because we've all seen blow dried out French rolls. You know, we've all seen the French rolls that are perfect and super smooth. And I think it's you know, if you're looking at a bride now, brides wanna be pretty, they don't want to look like stiff and overdone. So Peter, another big facet of what you do is kind of celebrity styling. Um, and I, I know many hairdressers, that's like their dream to be able to do the hair of celebrities for, for whatever reason. Can you, what, what's it been like for you and, and how did you get into that world? It's because they're special. Yes, <laughs> yes. I'm going to be the chosen one. Yeah, the celebrities are the chosen ones. I think, I think the biggest thing to remember is that, you know, we all are vulnerable. We all, you know, they have our own hang-ups. We all have our own insecurities, and it doesn't matter whether you've got... I mean, Anna will tell you, you know, millions of followers. It makes no difference. What drives you is that search for perfection. And you genuinely find with most actors and actresses that there's a search for perfection, some sort of mission. And it totally gets in our way. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, it's definitely an obstruction. <laughs> and I think yeah, that's okay. good, good hair should kind of make you forget yourself. It shouldn't be an issue. It should be easy. Well, you can see how well that product is working. It's just like two seconds of heat, and you can see the activation yeah. of the bell curve. I'm literally, I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm going to ask you to just... Before you move on, I just want to point out, uh, Lucy Smirk is asking, what is the best way to embrace natural curls on long hair? A lot of times, Lucy, first off, it's a great haircut, like what Peter did here, getting just the right amount of layers, and then the right type of product, like the bell curve, curl cream. Great haircut with great product and then learning how to diffuse in a very gentle way like this, and there's your recipe. Anything you want to add to embracing? I think the biggest key is not to, you know, when I'm lifting, I lift, and then I get my hands out of it. You know, you often see me if I'm working, and kind of, if I'm painting or coloring hair or cutting hair, if I'm doing something with a clipper, I'll put one hand to my belt, just so that it forces me not to fiddle. It forces me not to rest on the head or apply extra pressure or tension to the head. You can see it's just like bouncing and going forward. Okay, we're on the last little rounds here. And what's your theory with diffuse drawing? Do you like to leave it a little bit damp? Or Absolutely. Yeah, so you always leave a little bit in? Absolutely, I like it. And if it gets too dry, I'll use a little bit of the bell curve afterwards. You can actually see the shape really nicely right here, the roundness of the shape. Yeah, yeah. Come up, just come up slightly. So you can see this is this is actually a really good point. If you just hold there, Anna. Mm -hmm. That's great. There's so the haircut. You, you can see there's the haircut all the way through there. And you can actually see if I turn her sideways, if you tip forward the tiny bit more, you can actually see all the layers rounding through here. And I mean... Really, you know, to go from Sassoon's where we were doing sort of two, three, four hour haircuts to be able to do 20 minute haircuts is very, very liberating. Well, I do think that you know, like strong foundation helps you do the 20 minute haircuts and make them great. So we can't take that for granted. That's, really. I mean, it, it's, yeah. it's understanding your technique, understanding, you know, how it works. I mean, you know, watching Anna skate like in Venice for the first time was like, wow, okay, you look like you were born on those skates. And then when she sort of said, actually, I've only been doing this for four years, I was like, how did you cram 10,000 hours into four years? Because, you know, my theory is 10,000 hours yeah. to be good at anything. I'm pretty sure I've, I've been skating for 10,000 hours. Um, I think I did the math one, one year, and I... <laughs> it was... Um, 
hilarious how much money I was spending going to the rinks pre-COVID. So I basically Rather spent, than skating I, outdoors, you're going to skating rinks? Oh, well, that's where I learned. That's where the action is? Where, I'm, a, I'm a rhythm skater, dance skater. So I, yeah, roller rinks were my favorite. And then during COVID times, I just, I skated outside, which made me a more aggressive, more, I think a stronger skater. Um, you have to deal with a lot more obstacles outside. Human beings. Um, no, inside of the rink you have to deal with human beings, but I mean, at least the rinks are smooth. Floors. No dogs are chasing you. Yeah, no gravel, no, no rocks want to end your life. Um, I, 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 I lost track of that. Do you skate a lot in Venice, like on the beach there, or what, what's your favorite outdoor spot in LA? The new Venice skate park is great. They don't, next to the skate park, they have a skate plaza. So, um, yeah, that's a beautiful place to skate. All right, Peter, so you've dried the hair with the belt it's, it's got a little bit of dampness to it. You've got that little sneaky braid in there, so I know everyone is wondering what's going to happen now with the braid. This is where you start to dress the hair. So for, for me, if I was on set, or if I'm shooting this on a, you know, we're shooting Anna, which we are going to do afterwards, I'm going to do this in reverse. You can't really see the braid in there, it's just hidden underneath. And because we've done the haircut before, all the layering is kind of bouncing out, letting it lift. There you go, Anna's doing in-situ selfies. Love it. Yeah, cute. It's like a... So this is something I also that I use a lot, is I, I really encourage my clients to use their phones rather than having a mirror, because seeing that reverse image of yourself for 45 minutes, an hour, I really don't find conducive to like, you know, being comfortable with your self image while you're cutting hair. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is taking all the hair around, just rock Anna's hair over to the side. This side, just very loosely again. We're trying to have a loose look at the French braid or roll. Okay, I'll just carry on, just bringing all that weight around until I get it in the middle of the back of the neck. Start rolling. You can use your tail comb in the back of the neck there just to tuck it a little tighter. Okay, and then once I've got, got it up straight, you can kind of see where I am at this point, very clearly. Got a nice beginning of a roll. And you just carry on twisting, and you just pop that underneath. And use your tail comb at this point. Just use it as a lever all the way around. And That's just, a really great trick, what you're doing right there. I think people, so, can you explain what, what so that does? I'm basically pulling the hair from the sides around into this, but giving myself a little bit of looseness to the hair. So instead of just being a super tight bray, um, French pleat, it's got a little bit of bagginess to it, but that bagginess doesn't compromise how well it's going to stay on the head. So just leveraging. And you can use a fork comb if you really want to up here. So I'm just gonna do that. And this is all right on top of the braid. And you haven't used any pins yet. Whatsoever. At this point, I'm just holding it there. And I've used my comb, which my comb has actually pierced the top of the um, braid there. So it'll just stay nice and stable. I can pinch my pin, pinch the pin together. So we stretch it out a little bit first to give it a little bit of, stretch it out, push it into the hair first of all. Open it out again. It's almost the same move you made with the comb where you turn Absolutely, it. Absolutely, you yeah. got it. Right, and then. And that was more of a hairpin than a bobby pin. Absolutely. So it's I, a softer. It's the Japanese hairpins, the, the serrated U ones. Pin. Yes. So we're just pulling those two together. I can feel it. 15 years of battle, it lets me know. Like, I can feel the difference <laughs> yeah. between a bobby pin, a closed one, or an open. Yeah, it's, okay. it's funny, isn't it? Isn't like wild? how you feel it on the scalp, the difference. Yeah. Okay, and then I so there's, even see it. there's two in there. You really shouldn't feel them because I'm not doing that. And if you, kept, when you want to come up on top here, just rock your head back a little, Anna. So right here on top, you can see where I've been holding the direction of the hair to swoop around there. I'm just going to take that pin, squeeze it together, put it around the first bit of hair, oh, squeeze just... it together. And there's my pin. 
and I just tap that down and that'll hold that one in place there. Can we see that one more time? Yep, of course. So I can actually, just using, it, using that to pull out because those pins will hold it now. So we pull that one out. Okay, so I'll get my fingers out of there. So you can see there's like a swoop in the hair to go into that. Now, some people like to turn that into a big cone shape. If you want to turn that into a cone shape, it's very easy. You can put your fork comb in there and rotate it. But I like just to take that area, pinch it with the, with the pin, and then slide that pin gently down. So it'll just hold that in place. So is that just two pins at this point? Uh, this actually three. Three. I missed one. I was looking at yeah. quite comments. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, there's three, three in there, and I mean, you know, at this point, it's, it's rock solid. I can wiggle a whole head on that. And so you know, if you haven't been watching from the beginning, the real trick here is after Peter cut the hair, he put a very fine um, scalp braid in, yeah. four, four oh. row scalp yeah. braid in, in the center, knowing that he could then secure the hair to that, which just makes it so much easier. Peter, can you turn the pattern around so we can see the profile? Can see, okay, just stipulating one new leg. Okay. Put a bell curve on my fingertips. This is the spray, and I just put it through the ends there to give myself a little bit of texture. I'm just kind of putting it through on the fruit bang there. So this is kind of the reviving spray. Yeah. Let's show that to the audience in case they're wondering. Yeah. Again, it's working with Intelligent uh, Beauty Global Products. This is the Bell Curve Curl Reviving Spray. So I'm going to pull one out in the back of the neck here. I'm going to take the gown off at this stage and just let Anna stay sitting for a second for me. Right. So, now, the great thing about this braid is it's not one technique. You can do the braid horizontally across the nape of the neck, and you can roll the hair under, and then using uh, your pins, you can actually get pin, uh, the U-pins like this, and push them in sideways and create like a faux bob. Um, I love to pull bits out as I'm working I love it to look like a little disheveled, like, like she's done it herself. Um, you could put that, if you take that braid up higher and put it in horizontally there, you can do a roll and you can have a whole victory roll going on. Um, if you want to do it on super clean hair, I would suggest using a mousse or a thickening lotion, blow drying all the hair smoothly, doing the braid, and then doing your victory roll or your bob roll, roll down the bob underneath and then you're fastening it to the braid. So whether it's horizontal, vertical, diagonal. So that big lesson is to have that, that scalp braid as your anchor. Absolutely. Um, and then you can go from there. Even with hair pieces, like even in my own limited Postiche. editorial experience, Postiche. I once did one on the top and yeah. then I was able to put a few put a uh, mats on, like okay. you know, the, the foam and then drag the hair over it. There's um, a great little point here. I'm gonna just do one slightly tighter in the back of the neck. Just to show you, so I've taken a shorter pin now. So if you like this fitting in the back of the neck, take your fork comb in the same way, you want to rotate it a little bit. Take your fork comb, rotate it. Just get your tension nice and even and get to your point there. Take your small pin, pop your small pin in. Yeah, I really like that. I feel the way it just kind of tucks so you, in you, the nape. You can just, yeah, you just tuck in the nape. And, you know, I can carry on tucking, but I like to have things to be a little bit looser. I like things falling out around the ear. For me, make, when I'm make, working on making images, it's prettier. You know, if I'm looking at a fringe that's too perfect, it never looks pretty in a picture. The more kind of higgledy-piggledy or uneven it is. So again, just bringing out the organic, natural beauty of hair and of, of your, your model, in this case, Anna, working with this incredible range of products that is unique in so many ways, unique because of the way that it's formulated to be pure and organic, then certified by third parties, also a female-led company, which is something to be said. It's, it's definitely something that got us excited about working with uh, Intelligent Beauty Global, and then the performance. The performance speaks for itself, right, Peter? Super easy. I mean, and as much as I can take that up, to take it down is a matter of taking one. You ready, Anna? Okay. We're, go we're going. We're going. I love taking things up and putting them down again, just to see what happens. Um, often, when you take hair down, you get like a little bit of extra, really interesting texture. Just throw your head forward again for a second. Yeah, sometimes the last yeah. shot at a photo shoot are the ones that are the best, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So this is one thing I really learned, and 
you know, I look at that texture now, and it would be very hard for me to get that texture dried in. It's so pretty, it's really natural, it's got a little bit of lived-in feeling to it. Um, I don't mind about the haze on top. If that bothers you, a tiny bit of bell curve on the palm of your hand, and just smooth over the surface. Peter, again, another, uh, another fun hour with you. This is our second uh, this month, and we'll have some more in the future. So be sure to check out the one that we did previously. They all live on the Hairbrain Facebook page under the Live button. Now uh, Peter's going to do some more styling on Anna, Offset. We're going to do some photos. You'll see some great content coming out in the next week from Peter and from the IM Beauty team. Check, follow the pages. Peter Gray on Instagram, IM uh, Beauty Global, and of course Anna Octo on TikTok yeah, to see what that skating. Uh, oh, Instagram too. Yeah, Instagram. See that skating. You know. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you for the wonderful show. Thank you very much. Peace out, guys.